What's up guys, today I want to do a video on simple harmonic motion examples. Okay, now I'm not really gonna teach simple harmonic motion, guys. I have another video that goes through all of the things that you need to know. I'll link that down in the description if you wanna check that one out first. But essentially the formulas that we're gonna be looking at today are we're gonna be looking at the restored force formula, Fs equals minus Kx. I'm also gonna be using the kinetic energy of a mass, which is gonna be one half m v squared and we're also going to be looking at the potential energy stored in a spring which is going to be one half k x squared so if you don't know what any of those variables mean definitely go back and check out the video explaining the basics of simple harmonic motion in in a horizontal fashion so in this video i'm going to do three different examples and they all kind of they're the same kind of idea but they all have a different type of goal all right, so in this example, a block with a mass of n equals 0.05 kilograms oscillates on a spring with a spring constant k of 500 newtons per meter. The amplitude is four centimeters, and I wanna calculate the max speed of the block, okay? So essentially what's happening is we have some sort of block that's on a surface, and there's a spring attached to it, and it's oscillating back and forth in this region of oscillation with an a that's equal to four centimeters, okay? Remember guys, A is the distance from equilibrium to the maximum stretch or the maximum compress. Now when I wanna know the max speed, I know that speed is gonna be in the form of kinetic energy. And I know that it's gonna come from some potential energy. The only other way to get kinetic energy would be if I had an applied force or something from the outside, but this is a closed system. So I know there has to be some sort of potential energy that is going to get converted into kinetic energy. Now we also know from the video that right here at the center, this is max speed. So that's gonna be the location that we're gonna be looking at. At max speed, X is equal to zero meters, all right? So out here, I know that I'm stopped. So here I have no Ke, but my X is its max. So now we have a situation where the potential energy that we're gonna be using is the potential energy stored in a spring, one half K X squared. And when I'm at my maximum amplitude, that's when I'm gonna be my max potential energy. And that UGS, I mean that US, is gonna be converted into KE. Now granted, don't, don't be, at each point, initial and final, there is a KE here. Like we don't wanna forget about these initials and, and finals, but like I said, finally, when it's right here, X is zero. So this is really just goes to zero joules. So I don't even put it in there. And I know that here I'm stopped on the outside, no KE. So I'm just gonna stop that initially. So now when I solve, I'm just gonna look and say that one half K X squared is gonna be converted down into one half mv squared. I can then substitute in, I can multiply both sides by two and get rid of that one half, that makes life easy. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say that k is 500 newton meters, x, which has to be in meters, is 0.04 meters squared. That's gonna be equal to one half m, the mass of the block, 0.05 kilograms, times V squared. Do not forget the V, okay? Then when we do some work here, some math work, we find out that V is gonna be equal to four meters per second. All right guys, now this one's slightly different. What this is saying now is that if I have this block, it's gonna be a little bit more massive, and it is oscillating back and forth between here and here, where this is the equilibrium position right here, it says that it has a max amplitude equal to eight centimeters, but they wanna know what's the speed, not here where speed is the max like we just did, but they wanna know what is the speed here. That's what I really wanna know. Now this is really a two-step problem because what we need to remember from past units, guys, is that if there's no outside work being done, no non-conservative forces like friction or tensions or applied forces, that energy is conserved. So if I know total energy anywhere, I know it everywhere. So I need to find energy total because if I could do that, I can apply that energy total 
to anywhere in the system or anywhere in this oscillation. So we find a find energy total and then use that in the KE formula. So here's what I need to do. Step number one, let's go ahead like we did right here and find out what is the gravi what is the spring potential energy at eight centimeters. So we know that US is equal to one half K X squared. So one half times 500 Newton meters times 0.08 squared. Remember, this must be squared and this must be in meters. So we find out that the, the energy here, right, US is going to be equal to 1.6 joules. Now, is this the total energy? Yes, this is E total because at this particular spot, KE is equal to zero joules. All right, and there, this, so that means right here where US is its max, that is now the energy total of a system. So now I can use this energy total and I can say that the energy total of a system or the total mechanical energy is gonna be equal to US plus KE anywhere in that system. Now it's also plus any work done by non-conservative forces, but there are no outside forces, so this is zero joules, so we don't have to worry about it. So we can say now that the energy total 1.6 joules is equal to one half kx squared. So we have k is going to be the same 500 newton meters, newtons per meter, but now we don't wanna know it at eight, we wanna know it at 0.04 meters, and this has to be squared, plus one half m, two kilograms squared, V squared. And that V is the V that we're trying to find out, okay? And when we solve, we see that V equals 1.1 meters per second at 0.04, okay? So in the first example, we found the energy at any point, the maximums and the min. That's the most easy to deal with. But if we know that and we know that energy is conserved, we can find one of those max or min energies and then we could apply it to any energy total at any point in the system. Let's do one last one with a little bit more. Okay, so in this example, we have a block mass eight kilograms attached to a spring with a K constant equal to 500 newtons meters. Then I'm gonna give it a little kick, all right? It's initially at rest, I give it a sudden impulse which is gonna give it an initial speed, kind of like throwing a ball upwards. And I wanna know instead of how high does this ball go, I wanna know how far does a block go. So here's kind of what the picture looks like. I have some sort of block that's on the surface and it's VI is equal to zero meters per second, okay? Then I give it a kick and it moves the object now with the new VI equal to two meters per second. Now the spring is gonna slow it down over to here. VF is gonna be equal to zero meters per second. And I wanna know what is this A when that comes to a stop. Now guys, the reason we cannot use kinematics here is because kinematics applies that A is equal to, is constant, okay? And that is not the case here, okay? That is not true. A varies, remember, as X varies, so does fs and if fs varies then a equals f net over m then a must vary so you cannot use kinematics no vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax none of that can apply because a is not constant but what you can do is say that if i have some initial speed at x equals zero when x equals zero meters us equals zero joules but when v naught equals two meters per second i can say that i'm going to have some ke that is going to be equal to one half m v squared and when i stop some position later x equals a well then we know that ke is going to be equal to zero joules but us is going to be equal to it's max, one half K X squared. So all I have to do is set up KE initial to equal 
us after and that's going to allow me to find this variable right here that's going to be the a that i'm looking for so initially really we had zero plus ke and finally we had zero plus us so i got rid of the zeros i simplified this out i'm going to write one half the m of this block was equal to eight kilograms the v initial is going to be two meters per second that's going to be squared that's going to be equal to one half the k constant 500 newton times meters divided by meters and then i want to know x squared okay and when we do some math we find that x is going to be equal to 0.25 meters okay so this is different ways guys that we can vary the energies of a spring using hooke's law and solve for simple equations next video i'm going to start working through periods frequencies, vertical springs, and also pendulums. If you have any questions coming up about those, leave them here so I can answer them when I record those videos. Guys, if this helped, can you please give the video a thumbs up? It helps tell YouTube that it's a good video and let your friends know that I'm making videos to help them out as well. I'll catch you on the next one, guys.